Okay, right. Well, I think we're ready to go. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So as always, I'm going to light a candle and you're welcome to join me in doing that. And then we'll say our prayer. when I say the prayer. We light this candle as a symbol of our faith and hope for our future as a parish, a people, a world. We trust in the alchemy of the Holy Spirit to bring her dream to life here amongst us. Gather your people, O God, that your dream for us may come true. Amen. today is uh, in celebration of Martin um, Martin of Tours so I'll just get my pot to God all-powerful who called Martin from the armies of this world to be a faithful soldier of Christ give us grace to follow him in his love and compassion for the needy and enable your church to claim for all people their inheritance as children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh, I must bring my hypocrite trap down because I'm tight now, so let's just position myself a bit better. And I'll read our psalm for today which is psalm 82 that's psalm 82 oh. okay god has taken his place in the divine council in the midst of the of the gods he holds judgment how long will you judge justly and how and show partiality to the wicked give justice to the weak and the orphan Maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk around in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I say, you are gods, children of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Rise up, O God. Judge the earth for all the nations belong to you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Okay, so we're going to read our, our Mark passage, which we've been um, going through for the last few weeks. Um, not this passage, but the book of Mark, Mark's Gospel, and uh, it'd be lovely for you to have a listen and share your comments and see what you uh, what you think. So I'll read it through once, as uh, I normally do, and then we'll maybe have a little reflection on some of my thoughts, and then uh, I'll read it again, and you can I'll start reading all of your comments and things. So it's Mark chapter eight, verses fourteen to twenty one. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, 
beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, is it because we have no bread? And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, 12. And then, and the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, seven. Then he said to them, do you not yet understand? Okay, so I feel like most of this passage is Jesus saying, ah, don't you get it yet? That's mainly, mainly what he says in this passage. And I think um, it's quite helpful if, if you do have a Bible or if you tuned in yesterday, that you can just be aware of yesterday's passage as well. Because I think quite a lot of this is in response um, to, well, certainly the initial part about yeast and Pharisees and Herod is, is in response to um, verse 11, um, which is the Pharisees came and began to argue with him, asking, for, um, asking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And I think there's um, a lot of this not understanding stuff that Jesus is getting frustrated with is that the the signs that people are looking for are there. They're just not what they expect to see, I, I think. Anyway, so I think Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing in the kingdom of God and I'm showing you all these signs and wonders, but you don't see it because it's not the signs you're expecting or you're assuming. Um, and the Pharisees wanted to see some um, sort of glorious restoration of Israel and that's not what it looked like so uh, I think that's sort of where, where the initial um, kind of talking about this the the yeast in the bread or and the, well the yeast uh, of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod is, is um, a way of describing the misunderstanding of what the kingdom of heaven looks like and that's that grows grows in in the Pharisees, or maybe that's how I want to see it. Um, let me just read my notes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let me know what you think about that. Um, but I, I sometimes I feel like it's a bit harsh of Jesus to say, "Don't you get it?" Because it's so different to what they're expecting. And sometimes we just don't get stuff. Um, so that's partly why I chose the the psalm, which was about not understanding. Um, but I. I, I, I definitely remember at school feeling um, in maths like I just was never getting it and I was, used to feel so frustrated when the teacher would explain things and then say the same thing again and again slowly and I think I didn't get it the first time slowing it down is not going to help but I mean also <laughs> another example of not understanding yesterday I was um, with my three-year-old and we were we had those puzzles where you have to fit a number into a picture and the picture has the corresponding numbers of things underneath it so we were, we were trying to work out what one of the numbers was and I said to her well why don't we count if we know it fits in here why don't we count all the strawberries and so she carefully counted one two three four five I said yeah so what number is it and she looked at me really intensely <laughs> and then said H <laughs> no <laughs> so Sometimes we just don't get things because we're too little to understand. And I sort of wonder at this stage, you know, maybe the disciples just aren't getting it because it's, they just think it's about bread or something. It's not their fault, really. Maybe they're, maybe, they, you know, they, they'll get there eventually. But um, perhaps at the moment, it's just a bit too much to comprehend. Okay, so uh, let me just see if there are any more uh, actual theological points to make. Um... Let me just check what I was saying. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, that's the other thing that I just was remembering about, that chapter 8 is, in general, is a significant chapter in Mark because it, it changes the, co the course and direction of the gospel changes. So it's, until this point, I think it, generally people agree that it's been mainly about Jesus establishing his authority and kind of um, revealing himself as the son of God. And then the second half looks more towards Jesus's death 
um, and what that means for people. And so I think there's a shift where, to this point, he hasn't agitated the Pharisees and Herod in, well, we were talking a lot about the, um, the, the Messianic secret, you know, he's not, but from this point on, he is revealing himself now and he is standing in opposition to those in power and authority and that's becoming um, more overt, I think. So, um, yeah, it's almost a bit sort of a, of a passage of, of, of Jesus really coming out and saying, this is wrong. These people don't get what the kingdom of heaven is like and I don't want you to follow them, um, which is, uh, yeah, more overt, I suppose. Okay, great. Look, I'm looking forward to reading all your comments in a second, but I'll just stop there and I'll, I'll read the passage again. So Mark 8, starting at verse 14. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, Is it because we have no bread? And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five, li five loaves for, fi for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, 12. And the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, seven. Then he said to them, do you not yet understand? Okay, so let's, I'm just going to scroll back up and have a little look at the comments here. Ah, oh, nice. Okay, so Louis starts by saying, yeah, I find it comforting that the disciples didn't get it and that it was it felt important to include this in the gospel account. Yes, I mean, I agree with that. <laughs> I came to the end of the passage reading it fresh yesterday thinking, I don't get it. <laughs> so, yeah, I find it reassuring. <laughs> I don't, yeah, Kath says, I don't get it. What's the significance of the leftovers? Ah, I'm glad you asked this, Kath, because I was wondering that too. And, I mean, I, I haven't read, people might have replied to you there. But I, so one thing I was reading, and this is only one thing, but it's a theory that um, lots of scholars, I think, hold, is that the leftovers... Um, so there are, there, there are the, look, I'll step back a bit. There are two, there are these two feeding stories, the feeding of the 5,000, the feeding of the 4,000. And in between that is the story of the, um, is it the Phoenician woman with the scraps, eating the scraps from under the table story. And it's sort of painting a picture of abundance for Israel. So that's the, it's sort of signified in the feeding of the 5,000 and the baskets left over is 12 perhaps to suggest that the the 12 tribes of Israel there's enough to go around for everyone so a sense of God's provision for all of Israel then we move we move away from um a um sort of Jewish territory to into a gent gentile territory um and uh, the women and the woman in the middle is sort of um is, is telling us what's going on in a way her saying shouldn't everyone even even the dogs that can have the scraps sort of thing and there's a sense that when we move to the feeding of the 4,000 in gentile territory um there's even an abundance and leftover for the gentiles too so and apparently seven in the bible is um a, per a perfect number so i think there's i mean i'm gonna read the comments maybe you're already saying like this is utter nonsense but <laughs> but uh, that's some people think that the the 12 is to represent israel the seven is perfection so that god's provision and love and abundance is made complete in providing for the gentiles as well as for is the jews does that make sense i don't know okay i'm gonna keep reading um sally says jesus could be quite rude really <laughs> yeah i understand why the disciples didn't understand perhaps he could have explained it more clearly yeah well that's how i felt with my math teacher Okay, um, and yeah, Vivian's picked up, I guess, on what I was trying to say, overflowing abundance. I think that's it, um, enough, not just for Israel, but flowing out to the Gentiles too. Okay, Rosalind says, I found it difficult to think of 
yeast as being something bad, then I realised leaven can go off and needs to be cleaned out. Mm. Rosalind, have you been getting on into that um, that trend of making, what's that bread called? Um, sourdough. Everyone's into sourdough at the moment, aren't they? Is that what happens? I don't know. I don't know that much about bread, but there we go. It, it can go off and needs to be cleaned out. So yeah, I mean, I think I think that's it. It's like it can be uncontrollable and and go up and kind of go crazy. But there is, I mean, there's a significance in bread, in that um, for Passover and things, the Jews would remember Passover by making flat breads with no yeast, and and then when they have more time, you know, they would make normal normal bread um, with yeast in it. Um, so I think so. One commentary I was reading was talking about the disciples worrying that they were eating the wrong kind of bread and that Jesus wanted them to remember something by eating a different kind of bread so there's I think that's the kind of that's part of the confusion they're talking about bread because bread did have a significance to them you know for, for Jews uh right let's carry on okay. oh, Sally says as a teacher if my pupils didn't understand something I tried to explain it in a different way hmm yes Exactly. <laughs> okay, and Paul's saying, I wonder if it's a lesson about too much expectancy of ourselves um, with what we don't have, looking for signs, not only from Jesus, but signs within ourselves. But the greatest joy of learning is learning what we don't, that we, that what we don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, might, I might not surprise you, but I often feel completely ignorant. <laughs> all the things I don't know. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, I'm amazed by how little I know. I uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about the first bit. I wonder if it's a lesson about too much expectancy of ourselves. Mm, I think that's interesting. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, Rosalind again says, um, "Oh, and uh, thanks. Uh, you like you like the parable. Thanks." <laughs> Okay, and Sally's responding to Paul there saying, yes, but we do need help in developing that understanding. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, an interesting dimension to this is understanding more of ourselves. I mean, I haven't, haven't really touched on that, but that's an interesting point. And Janet's saying, Jesus also compares the kingdom of heaven to yeast. Yes, so it's not necessarily that yeast is, is bad per se. I think it's something that's... Um, like neutral, isn't it? But it can be used in different ways. The thing about yeast is it spreads invisibly and changes whatever, uh, whatever it's in, whatever it's in. So you need yeast from the right source. God, not Pharisees. What a lovely summary, Janet. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Louis, they're replying to Kath. The infinite love of God. So the more we sh share love, the more there is. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's. I think that's definitely what comes through in those feeding of the five thousand and four thousand stories. It's it's counterintuitive to share a, li a little. You know, we think, oh, I want to keep all that. I've been thinking about that a lot when we hear about vaccines coming out and how quickly we want to be able to produce it and deliver it to our own nation. And I, I think of other countries where there's not going to be the finances and things to roll it out in the same way and. Um, yeah, the idea of sharing can be really counterintuitive sometimes, um, but God's kingdom works differently to that. <laughs> oh, Rosalind, not sourdough then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I didn't even attempt it. Uh, Janet says, Jesus was tired. He'd been ministering for hours, so he got irritable and frustrated. Very human. Yeah. I mean... I wasn't very gracious with my daughter yesterday when she just didn't get it. <laughs> um, okay, Rosalind said, um, but I was thinking about pre-Passover cleaning out of all the yeast. Mm, yes, that's interesting because we the other day we would we had the passage which talked about cleaning pots and things, didn't it? Yeah. And Louis just replying to Paul that it's, it's like a paradox. The more we learn about God the more we realise that we don't know. Mm. Okay. Well, brilliant. Thank you for that really interesting discussion. And um, I think we'll, I think we'll move on now. 
and go um, and go to our time of prayer. Now, let me just find my messages here. Okay. So let's um, let's pray for the day, the world, um, whatever it is that's on our minds today. And I might just move the candle back into the into the other direction or something, or something to focus on. Oh God, we thank you for this day and again for this time to come together to discuss um, the Bible and its significance to us now. And we pray about our own understanding. We thank you that you give us others to help us figure things out and to make sense of your word. And so we pray today for our world. We pray for places where there's trouble and conflict, and where there's changes in leadership. We continue praying for uh, America with its, um, uh, well, the new uh, president in waiting, I've forgotten the term it is, but yeah. We think of Joe Biden and we think of uh, Trump and pray for um, a gracious and peaceful exit. Um, we pray as well for how um, politics is used in such divisive ways and how um, we know there's deep unrest. We pray for peaceful resolutions and we pray as well for justice. We pray for our own government and for uh, difficult Brexit discussions going on at the moment. We pray that uh, commerce and uh, finance and things aren't the only uh, things on the agenda, but that we are um, we are also fighting for things like justice and fairness and equality for the least. We continue prayers for Nigeria and for the troubles there. We pray for the church, for the church around the world, for the church in its lack of understanding. We pray as well for those who don't think or believe the same things as us, but that also call themselves Christians. We pray for grace and for understanding. We pray for churches persecuted. We pray for, um, for courage. And we pray for governments which uh, oppress people of faith, that they might they might see the error of their ways. We 
we pray now for our local communities, especially here in the UK where we're locked down. We think especially of those who are lonely, who are depressed and feeling hopeless. We pray that God reaches into their darkness and shows them hope. And we pray that we might be able to uh, have our eyes open to those around us who are struggling. We pray for those developing vaccines and for the, the kind of distant excitement that maybe we're feeling. But we pray that, that uh, things aren't rushed, that they're safe. And we pray for all those that are impacted by um, the PNHS limitations, for those who are um, unable to get doctor's appointments for other health complaints and for those who have um, operations postponed. And we pray um, for the NHS and for other care workers who are really at their limits, who are feeling exhausted and tired. We pray for protection of long-term long um, harm that might be caused for them. And we pray for the things going on um, at the moment for our parish. And we give thanks for Miranda's return to work. And we thank you for the team here. And we pray for wisdom as we lead the church. And we pray for God's blessing on our, on our own efforts, that they might be um, useful to people. We pray for our Advent courses coming up. And we pray for our services that we're starting to plan for Christmas. And we also pray uh, for our Christmas tree festival which is, um, well, the wheels are very much in motion for that. And we pray that that goes to plan and that it really blesses the community around here. And we pray for... Um, the local businesses and organisations in our in our parish. I think of businesses that are really struggling and places that have had to close. Should we pray for God's comfort to be with people who have lost their livelihoods. And we pray too that we might be able to help in any ways we can practically. We also pray that our government is thinking hard about how to help people back into work. And we pray for our students and the universities around us. I've been hearing lots of stories about students struggling recently and feeling very lonely and isolated. So we really pray for those. And we pray for um, Lily and I on Friday as we try to meet some students in a safe way by um, blessing them in their halls of residence. We pray that we might be able to, to reach people who are feeling lonely and afraid.
Can we carry on praying for um, St Michael in the city, as Louis just said there in the comments, that um, that we might be able to find a speedy solution to our damaged fence. And we give thanks for Annie and all the team that work at Faith for Change and all the amazing things that they do there. And so we just finish by praying for ourselves. Maybe we're bringing to God any of the tasks ahead of today. Asking for God's guidance and blessing on those. And I'll finish by saying the Lord's Prayer. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world, your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In the times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love now and forever. Amen. And at the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we rejoice, oh no, I'm reading the wrong bit, sorry. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we look back at those things that have flourished for a season, but are now falling to the ground. For all that has been, peace. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we rejoice in nature's bounty and abundance, even as we are aware of waste, inequality and injustice. For all that is, peace. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we draw closer together for warmth and company, as we look ahead to a season of cold and dormancy. For all that will be, strength. And the blessing of God, the womb of creation, the word of life and the wind of change. Be with you and rest upon your homes now and always. Amen. In the circle of God's love, we are one. The circle is never broken. In the light of God's welcome, we are one. The light never goes out. Let children teach us the wisdom of play. Let neighbours teach us the gentleness of care. May the circle surround us when we are apart and may the light draw us together again. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for being uh, being here today and for the interesting discussion. Um, we will be back with you tomorrow. So um, have a great and blessed day. Thanks all, bye-bye. <laughs>